Now I'm really pleased to um, welcome Simon as this afternoon's presenter. Simon's a freelance materials writer and editor based in Mexico. He has 20 years experience of English language teaching and before working in publishing he taught English to children and adults in Poland, the UK and Mexico. For Cambridge University Press, um, he wrote the Own It, Shape It project books with a particular focus on aligning the materials to the Cambridge Life Competencies Framework. So over to you, Simon. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, welcome to, the, to this uh, webinar. Um, I'll get straight on because we haven't got much time. Um, The, the title of this webinar is Using Projects to Develop Teens' Social Res Responsibility and Global Awareness. Um, I'd like to split this into three parts. The first uh, section, I would like to look at the life competences, competences framework of Cambridge University Press, uh, which all of their materials are aligned to. Then I'll focus on social responsibility and global awareness, which is one of the core competences from that framework and then look at project work and how we can use projects to uh, address social responsibility and develop social responsibility in the classroom. So first, the life competences framework. Uh, this, this framework has been developed by Cambridge uh, to, to support teachers um, to develop skills um, beyond the classroom. So life skills, in other words, life skills or 21st century skills. Um, now Cambridge align all of their materials to this framework, including own it and shape it, both in the course books and in the project books. We'll have a look at this in more detail. Here you can see the um, life competences wheel. And the idea of these competences, there are six core competences that we use to develop skills for life, developing skills both inside and outside of the classroom. Now, the, the, six, the six skills here, we start with the first skill, the blue cheese there in the, on the wheel, creative thinking. In the classroom, this, this involves activities such as story, writing stories, taking part in role plays, drama activities. Um, giving personal responses to different texts or, or material that students are using. And of course, in project work, they are creating um, a product at the end of the project. The task involves creating something new, be it a poster, a website, or, or any, other, any of the other projects that you're trying to do in class. The second core competency, learning to learn is an important area where students need to analyze their learning as they're going along. This can involve things such as organizing their notes, uh, preparing the format of written work, be it a project or any other piece of written work. Uh, it also involves learning outside of class, um, where they're doing their research, um, finding, finding material, finding information, facts and opinions. And an important part of learning to learn is also reflection, reflection on how they've completed their tasks um, with project work. Uh, in the project books for Own It and Shape It, there are a number of um, materials teachers and students can use to help them reflect on their projects, such as KWL charts or learning diaries, um, and also checklists for peer reflection and self-reflection to all aid this learning to learn core competency. The next core competency, the yellow one, is collaboration, where students work together. Uh, this involves all of the skills such as listening to each other, participating, uh, contributing to whatever task they're doing and sharing tasks with each other. Obviously projects allow lots of opportunities to do this. The next is critical thinking, where students solve problems 
They compare and contrast, they argue, they distinguish between fact and opinion, agree, disagree, give their point of view, analyze causes and effects, and eventually find solutions to any problem. Projects, again, are an ideal way of tackling this core competency, as there's usually a little bit more time for students to go in depth into, into their material and produce something new. Communication is the next core competency. Uh, this involves more, of, focuses more on the language students are using, uh, the appropriate forms of address, for example, greeting people, using language effectively, repeating, clarifying, and also presentation skills in terms of projects, but uh, the groups very often need to present uh, their product at the end of the project. And then the final core competency is that of social responsibility, which is what we'll be focusing on today. And the main thrust of the social responsibility core competency is that students are contributing positively, both inside and outside of the classroom. And we'll look at that in more detail in a moment. Also in, on that wheel, you see the three foundation layers, which we'll also touch on later in the talk, emotional development, Digital literacy, which is pro probably even more important at the moment, as we're all working online, giving classes online. Um, so I'll talk in a moment, in a while, about how we can use projects online too. And discipline knowledge as a found knowledge as a foundation layer. Um, students will be increasing their knowledge about whatever topic they are they are discussing or learning in class in, in whatever subject but also in English language too. So how do these skill how can we how do these skills be used in the classroom? How do we integrate them into the classroom? The types of activities I mentioned can be used to increase student still skills in the following ways with creative thinking learners can actively participate in creative activities such as the ones I mentioned storytelling uh, creating new projects um, presentation ideas generating new ideas and using them to solve problems in the classroom critical thinking we can use to identify patterns and re relationships evaluate ideas and solve problems Learning to learn, we can help students develop their practical skills and take control of their learning by reflecting on their progress, analyzing and reflecting on their progress. Communication skills, we develop them in class by allowing students to choose the most appropriate language um, for different situations. They can manage their conversations effectively and express themselves clearly and confidently. As I mentioned, in terms of projects, this will be very much in the presentation stage, but also as they're developing the project, they'll be communicating with each other, agreeing and disagreeing, etc., clarifying their arguments. Collaboration in the classroom, this means learners work well together in groups, they listen to others, they share tasks and find solutions. And then social responsibility, is, there, is where students recognize the different roles and responsibilities that uh, in, in a variety of groups, which we'll look at in a minute, a variety of social groups and understand cultural and global issues. And then one of the foundation layers is here, the emotional development. Where learners describe and manage emotions, develop positive relationships with others. They're doing this through all of the other six core competencies emotional development is part is underlies the, the other six competencies as they, as they work on any any task be it a project or any other task working with others uh, working outside of the classroom independent learning that they're developing and managing their emotions at that time at the same time so let's look at social responsibilities in more detail remembering that the goal of social responsibility is to positive, um, contribute positively inside and outside the classroom. 
of the frame the Cambridge Life Competences Framework that defines social responsibility as this, the ability to understand and implement rights and responsibilities as a citizen of a country, as well as in the wider global community. Now, this is quite a wide definition and it's at first glance, it's quite difficult to see how we can apply it in the classroom. Um, so what the framework does is break things down into core areas, which we can then look at how we apply things. If we're teaching, for, for example, present simple for daily routines, how does this relate to, to social responsibility? So the three core areas are there, understanding personal and social responsibilities as part of a social group, showing intercultural awareness, and understanding global issues. And all of these, these, these three core areas are things that students will be focusing on inside and outside of the classroom. Let's have a look at social groups first. As, as teenagers now that their social groups will be changing and their role within social groups will be changing and developing as they get older. And they need to identify and per personal and social responsibility as a member of a social group or as a global citizen. I have four different social groups here um, that teenagers are all part of to a, a larger or lesser extent. Uh, the first one is family. Um, teenagers' roles within family are certainly changing as they get older. Um, they've always been helping out around the house, but the, the way they help out uh, will be different. They, would, they need to participate more in decisions at this stage with families. This doesn't mean they actually make decisions necessarily, or well, they could do, but they need to participate in decisions. For example, doing the weekly shop, what groceries do we need? Teenagers could actually participate and suggest what things they need, what things we need to eat this week, how much money do we have, and, and contribute to the discussion within the family. Peers is another social group that teenagers are in part, uh, part of and is becoming more important at this age. Their friends are more and more important as family becomes less important maybe. And with peers, student, um, students will be supporting each other, giving their opinions, making plans, maybe either short-term plans or long-term plans. It could be for the weekend, it could be for longer-term plans for further study or jobs after school. And they provide each other with motivation. We hear a lot about negative peer pressure, but there's also positive peer pressure where students can encourage each other to participate, in, again, inside and outside the classroom, they, in project work, they can motivate each other to take part, take on different roles and responsibilities. Another social group is the school in general, the wider school. Again, it's, it's important for teenagers here to be involved in decisions. Um, this could mean simple things like where they're sitting in class, how they, who they work with, when they work with them. Their grading, how they are graded, what's ref the reflection when they're grading themselves, grading each other, being graded by the teacher, and also what activities they do. This applies to projects. Students can choose their roles within a project, but they can also tweak the project to reflect their own interests if necessary. But the point is that they're being, they become involved in the decisions at school. And the final social group here is the wider community. Uh, like the, the teenager in the picture here, volunteering to clean up a park or clean up a wall of graffiti. What students need here is, or teenagers need, is to see that there is a measurable impact in the actions that they're taking so they can reflect on it, what they've, they've done, was it worth doing it, what did they achieve? And all of these things, family, peers, school, community, 
what's important is that students and teenagers are making meaningful contributions um, within their social group, either a small social group or a wider social group. The second core area was about intercultural awareness. Um, this is describing and anal analyzing different cultures, which could be countries or groups and organizations, and making positive and respectful comparisons. This involves collaboration, um, which is obviously a big part of project work. Where they observe, or compare, negotiate, defend their points of view. And accept differences, which is very important, accepting differences and, and viewing it, things in a positive way. But also increased awareness means um, looking at materials with cultural and intercultural topics at all levels. And this can start from unit one of level one with Own It and Shape It, and it does with Own It and Shape It. I'll show you a project later, which is unit one at level one. And all of this, helps increase their knowledge of and interaction with the world. There's a table here on the, on the right, um, which shows four aspects of developing cultural awareness, four ways of developing cultural awareness. Um, first way is when we look at our own culture from our own point of view. And in project work, this would mean maybe producing something like a guidebook or a poster or a website for visitors or a number of other things where they are presenting their own point of view of their own culture, giving their own opinions of their own culture. Second one is others' opinions of their own culture. And students can find out about this by uh, other sources of information, researching other sources of information, such sort as of articles and websites written by visitors to their culture. And this then they can compare and contrast what other people think to what they think of their own culture. And the third aspect is our own point of view of other cultures. If you've been to another country, if students have been to lucky enough to have been to another country, they can write a write journals or describe their experiences and compare and contrast to their own culture. If they haven't been, that doesn't matter. They can still, they can imagine, write stories about an imaginary journey, for example, to another culture, what they might find, what they'd like to find, what they expect to find. And the final aspect is others, other points of views of other cultures, other people's points of views of other cultures. Again, they would need, students would need to check sources of information here research books magazines and films films are a great way of uh, seeing how others view other cultures you're watching a foreign language film from anywhere around the world you learn about other cultures so these four these four ways of building intercultural awareness often intersect and we can use them in projects in different ways And the final uh, core area of social responsibility is that of global issues. This is where we identify, discuss, and understand a range of perspectives on global issues, for example, health, human rights, and the environment. Okay, the, the Own It and Shape It books have many, many cultural topics. And in fact, the projects are split into two um, areas. There are CLIL projects and there are cultural projects. So many global issues are, are discussed. And there's a lot of material there. And th this involves three steps when you're developing your response to global issues, looking at problems and solutions, for example, um, set there's a water shortage in town or in your country or in another country the problem is there's a water shortage what sort of solution what kind of solutions can we have the brainstorm solutions there would uh, create goals that relate to home school local region 
country and then maybe to the wider world. But the first, the first point here with goals is that they relate them to themselves. So it's more of a personal contribution. And then they can analyze their own personal behavior and think about what positive contributions they can make to address this global issue. So it's going from a local level, what I can do at a local level, personal level, and how this might affect the global issue, the wider global, global issue. And the point here is practical action. The students are able to um, devise practical actions that they can take and, and actually take them and analyze the effects of their practical actions. So the three, so there are three main areas across these three, these three core areas. It's the meaningful contribution, the development of knowledge, and taking practical action. Now this is still quite a wide, sorry, we've gone on too far. It's still quite a wide definition in terms of applying this in the classroom. So the framework, the framework develop, breaks things down even further by um, having components and can-do statements. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> Cat was trying to get into the room. Sorry about that. The um, breaking things down further into components and can-do statements. Um, for example, the first core area there of understanding personal responsibilities and social groups, being part of a social group, is split into two components: understanding responsibilities within a social group, and taking things one step further, fulfilling responsibilities within a social group. Now this. Um, is broken down even more by giving example can-do statements and this is how possibly a way that students can reflect on uh, on how thing on, on how they are doing things so uh, understanding responsibilities within a social group identifies positive behavior in social groups to which they belong so students can think about this at the end of the project or whatever task they are doing and decide whether they've done that. Have they identified positive behavior? Have they taken an active role in defining collective rights and responsibilities in school? And there's also example language there that they might be using at different, depending on the level. But this, this is actually for secondary level, this table here. Showing intercultural awareness is broken down into three further components. Understanding aspects of own culture, understanding aspects of other cultures, and interacting across cultures. And again, can-do statements are there to, fo to, to focus what students are doing. Are they appreciating their own culture? Would they make informed comparisons between their own society and other societies? And are they using their understanding of differences between cultures to help avoid misunderstandings? And the final one, understanding global issues is split into two, discussing a range of global issues and recognizing personal impact on global issues and can do statements there. They're demonstrating an awareness of human rights issues around the world or identifying ways in which personal habits and behavior have the capacity to affect the environment. So this has now broken it down into a much more practical way of applying this in the classroom. And we can apply them to the activities they're doing. Specifically for this web webinar, specifically projects. How can we use projects to to uh, practice the and develop the skill of social responsibility? And here are some benefits of project work. I've, I've put some benefits here because there are a lot more um, in the project books. Thrown it and shape it. Uh, there are pages in the introduction which describe the other benefits of project work. There are many, many, way, many ways that project work can aid and develop student skills. But I've chosen these ones because they're more rele relevant to social responsibility. Students can explore topics of interest and develop relationships between them and the world. Now, topics of interest is an area where 
you know you know your students a lot better than the people who wrote the me who wrote the project book or the people who wrote the the course books so you know the, the areas of interest that your students have so you can tweak projects to your students interests you can also avoid controversial topics although most of the projects within within textbooks are do avoid controversial topics anyway you can make them more controversial if you want to but the idea is that it's relevant to the students and what the students are interested in they provide practical activities that enhance knowledge and increase natural curiosity they encourage independence and a sense of responsibility projects there's a, a, a section in each project in the Own It and Shape It project books where students assign roles to each other. And so they have each person within each project group have their own roles and responsibilities. So this encourages independence and they have a sense of responsibility within their project group. And it improves communication skills through teamwork. They're arguing, disagreeing, giving their point of view. Um, so all of these things develop life skills, specifically here, develop social responsibility skills. So we'll go through some, quickly go through some examples now, practical examples from the project book. And, um, first one, first one, social groups and the core area. The component there is understanding responsibilities within a social group. Here there's a technology project where students identify problems in their school and develop an invention to address one of the problems. In this case, it's a dispenser or something to save plastic bottles. But it could be any number of, of different problems. Too much homework, they list them there. Too much homework, too many exams, too many unhealthy snacks. Students brainstorm and identify their problems within, within school, in this case, the social group of school, and then list possible solutions and create an invention. They present slides and share ideas and suggest improvements in the production stage. All projects in the project book for Own It and Shape It are split into three stages, preparation, development, and production. And at the final stage of production, they can present their ideas and suggest improvements. I've added a further stage there because this is relevant to social responsibility. Outside the classroom, they could apply their idea and try and use their idea. And then the important thing here is the can do. What have they achieved here? They've identified positive behavior in social groups to which they belong, in this case, school, um, so they've created an invention, shared ideas, resolved problems. And the point is they've made a meaningful contribution going, going back to the main point of social groups and responsibilities within a social group. They're making a meaningful contribution. Fulfilling responsibilities within a social group goes one step further. Uh, there are two, there's an example here of a PE project um how to make a school healthier and happier again the three stages in preparation they're discussing ideas giving opinions developing sharing roles and responsibilities interviewing others here it's important i should mention that a lot of this can be done online uh, we're working online at the moment uh, all of these projects can be adapted and are flexible and we're able to do each of these stages online using platforms like this. Students can discuss with each other. Um, they can develop a slide presentation like the one you're looking at now. Uh, there are different programs for developing online posters or websites, whatever the project is requiring. And even if we weren't in the current situation with the pandemic, even if it wasn't like this and we were at school, the project books still give ideas for flipped classroom activities where students in the development stage go away and research things for themselves and a lot of that research will be online 
and sharing ideas. And this is developing the foundation layer of digital literacy. They go away and they check facts and check multiple sources. Again, with this certain so, this project there outside of the classroom, they can make suggestions for school policy and carry out ideas. The, point, the important point again, the can do activity, take an active role, define collective rights and responsibilities at school. Again, making a meaningful contribution. These can do statements are also a way student, you can assess students using these can do statements. So throughout the project, through each stage, preparation, development, production, you can see if students are addressing the can-do statement and students can reflect on this themselves, either individually or within their group with peer reflection of this checklist of can-do statements and what they've achieved at the end of the project. Intercultural awareness, understanding as aspects of own culture. There are two examples here, a lookbook, and a scrapbook. The lookbook is about clothing, so they could choose a traditional style of dress from their own culture and how to present it to others. And they would, throughout the different stages, they would ask questions to develop intercultural awareness, understand and develop their understanding of their own culture. What styles are popular? Why are they popular? What activities are popular? What types of food do people eat? and why they could look into the history of food or clothing or whatever the topic is. Then they could find and in, organize information, what other people find interesting about this culture. So again, we're doing this cross section of, of the different aspects of widening intercultural awareness, understanding our own culture, but also helping others understand our own culture. And what do we want people to know in the production? They're checking the facts. And how are they going to present this? What do they want people to know? And the can do, the can do statement here is appreciate their own culture and its value. They've collaborated, they've observed, and increased awareness of their own culture to build knowledge of interaction uh, with their country's culture. Understanding aspects of other cultures. This is another aspect that we talked about earlier. It's important to notice here that the, the, the example here, Festival of Twins is from level one, unit one poster. So straight away in the first unit, we're exploring and developing the social responsibility skill. Um, they, in the presentation stage, where can we find information about a festival from another country? What kind of information do we need? Right? Making a spidergram to organize this information in the development stage. How are these festivals similar or different festivals in our culture? And then at the end, what have we learned from this um, analysis of a different culture and this presentation, in this case, a poster or a scrapbook? What have we learned about a different culture here? So they're making informed comparisons, the can-do statement, making informed comparisons between society and other societies. Again, to build knowledge of an interaction with the world. And then interacting with others across cultures, the third um, core area of intercultural awareness. We can encourage practical action outside of the classroom perhaps not so much at the moment with the current situation, but hopefully one day they will be able to visit her festival again, hopefully in, in, the, in the near future. At the, moment, at the moment, maybe not, so they could do it online. There's also many options to see other things online like guided tours of virtual tours of museums or historical sites. Um, they can write emails for information, join blog discussions of, that, of the topic that they're interested in. If they're interested in fashion after doing the, the lookbook, they can join a blog discussion about different fashion aspects, volunteer to help at a cultural site or event. Again, when they, when they start again, they can make dishes from other countries and research topics of interest, where it be music, stories, drama, history, anything. 
And the idea is that they use their understanding of difference, differences between cultures to help avoid misunderstandings. And this is going back to the, the main idea behind social responsibility, which is to contribute positively inside and outside the classroom. So they look for opportunities to analyze their own culture and explore values and attitudes shared by other cultures. And the final core area of global issues, we discuss, discuss discussing a range of global issues. There's a variety of topics and there's a variety of topics within own it and, and uh, shape it to do with environment, health, education, endangered animals, employment, migration, and, and many other things. Just a reminder here that, again, you can tweak these to, to suit your students' interests. You can avoid some topics and focus on, or focus on one particular area of a topic. It's, it's really up to you how you how you approach these issues or up to your students students themselves within their project groups and decide on what area to focus on um, again in the preparation stage that they're, they're identifying problems in the development stage they're thinking of solutions and in the production stage they're presenting and discussing ideas but all of this the can do statement here but demonstrating an awareness of human rights issues around the world. Okay. There are additional activities they can do here if they're interested, you can widen things out. They can read other text, articles, websites, take part in quizzes or debates or competitions, do web searches. And the, one big benefit of projects is that the, the material in the book is really very much a starting point and your groups your students and, and in their project groups they can take these things in, in a variety of different ways depending on their interests or depending on the problems and solutions they're looking at it can take many forms and many shapes each project and the final core area we're recognizing personal impact on global issues and this is extremely important for, again to teenagers relating it relating global issues to their own lives firstly identifying the problem and how it affects them we, we talked about water shortage earlier um how how does that affect them in their daily lives it could be anything else it could be pollution traffic problems it could be their the topic about diet and health or the amount of physical activity they're doing what personal impact do i have how am i contributing to this problem am i making this problem worse what would i like to happen hopefully they want to make it better in terms of the social responsibility why do they want to make it better in terms of how this affect things globally how can i change my behavior to improve this problem and what practical actions can I take? Uh, again, going down to the, the, the core idea behind this is practical action, rather than meaningful contributions, developing knowledge and taking practical action. And we can do here, identify ways in which personal behavior and habits have the capacity to affect the environment. So, Practical actions they could take depending on the on the problem they're looking at. It could be saving resources, writing to authorities, encouraging family or other social groups to participate. For example, by recycling, driving less, using their bike, walking, volunteer in different join clubs and societies or discussion groups, etc. Many different practical actions that students can take and teenagers will think of more, um, will have many more ideas as they, as they work on the projects. It will, generate, it will generate more ideas themselves. And then finally, just quickly looking at the educator's role. Um, what, do, what can we do as we're using projects in the classroom and addressing uh, developing social responsibility? First of all, it's important 
to have an impartial point of view. That the material itself, um, the model that students will be looking at in Own It and Shape It will be um, impartial. And it's important that we maintain that impartiality and be fair and balanced when we're looking at different issues. Some of them might be quite contentious issues in some parts of the world. Um, we should encourage students to respect each other's opinions, um, which uh, means within their groups, collaborating within their groups, they're listening to each other, participating, but also being positive with each other. It's the idea of contributing positively again within their social groups, and then they'll be applying this later outside of the classroom. And then allowing students to come, students to come to their own conclusions. We're not, we shouldn't impose our opinion at the end of the project or during the project, during the development of the project. Um, allow students to make informed decisions themselves. And then also giving them time to reflect on their conclusions and maybe going back to the can-do statements, seeing what they've achieved at the end of the project and how they've achieved it. Uh, and so there, the summary there is we can incorporate social responsibility uh, into each project to offer stimulating and meaningful language practice. And so we're bringing the life skill of social responsibility into the class and developing, and in doing so, we're developing that skill for beyond the class. And I think that's it. That's it for now. I uh, hope that was okay. I hope that was useful. I'm sorry about the cat. I think I speak for all of us, Simon, when we say we'd love to introduce, be introduced to the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Simon. That was really, really interesting. Lots of great ideas there for, for project work. Um, we've got less than a minute for questions, so I'm going to ask you a quick fire one. Um, could you just say a little bit about assessing projects? Yeah, there's a number, there are a number of ways of doing this. I mentioned that the, the self-assessment, students can self-assessment with uh, KWL charts or learning diaries and checklists, which are provided. Uh, sorry, just to interrupt, KWL chart, that's no, um, what they know. A three column chart where, where they put students put what they know about the topic in the K, Mm -hmm. so, um, w is what what they want to learn, what mm -hmm. they want to know, and then L at the end is what they've learned. Um, so that's a kind of self assessment, self reflection. Mm -hmm. The learning diary is another way of uh, um, self reflection, keeping a log of how the project is going. They assess each other, peer reflection, how they participated within the project um, at the different stages. And teachers can also use these checklists themselves and they can use the can do statements. Teachers can use the can do statements um, to see how how students have approached these issues and developed their knowledge of global issues or intercultural awareness or how they've worked within social groups. Um, teachers can use that and again students can use those themselves. So there's a there are kind of there's self assessment peer assessment and teacher assessment here there are different ways of doing it lovely thank you well that's uh, afraid that's all we've got time for today so if you missed any of the recording of any of the webinar we'll make the recording available on our youtube channel tomorrow and um, there should be a link to download your certificate in the chat box now and if you want to find out any more about um, the courses that, that simon mentioned that's own it which is british english and shape it which is american english um, you can go to the cambridge.org website and type in own it or shape it so thanks very much, Simon. Thanks again. That was really great. Um, and thanks to everybody for attending. I hope to see you at our uh, another webinar in the future. Bye bye.